What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. The S13 240SX with the GM EPS. This is part two, check it out. So, I got my flange cut, it's, uh, it's cut long, it's not deburred yet, it's just cut down so I can move it without the rest of that assembly from the Saturn. Then I've got my boot off so you can see a little bit more of how this is set up here. I really just wanted to kind of make sure I wasn't missing anything. What we're gonna do is this cannot go any further this way. By the way, this taper is here, it, it maxes out. There's probably a bearing or something that's riding it inside there. This does not need to be disconnected yet, I don't think, so I'm not gonna screw with that. But I did pull the springs off. The springs sit like this. They're under surprisingly a high amount of tension. The black side goes like this, it hooks, and then you gotta pull it with some vice grips. I used some needle nose vice grips to get it, and it worked pretty well. So once those are out, we can take this apart here. I don't know if this is an OEM weld, so we get to focus, or not. But anyway, I'm gonna rotate this inside here. As I turn it, the steering wheel turns, all of it turns. We're gonna pull that bolt out, and then we should be able to pull this shaft out from the other side. But once we get it out, then we can cut this freely. But what we don't wanna change is the distance from here to here on both sides, because these are our OEM mounting points. Surprisingly easy. And then we should just be able to grab the back of this shaft here and pull this whole thing out. And there we go, just pull it right out. So this will go over this and this will be welded to the spline portion here that fits over this spline count. Now I wish these things were splined all the way down, it's just not the way they're manufactured because then we could cut it even shorter because we don't need all of this when we only have two inches of engagement area here. So what I'm gonna do this will go into this spot. I'll figure out where it needs to land. And then this is gonna be positioned on the shaft. Now I'm gonna cut off all this extra uh, bullshit here. This does not need to be there. This is left over from the junkyard where I cut it with a Sawzall to get it out quick. So I'll cut this in the bandsaw right up here. I may cut it a little bit further up in the taper so it can actually sit kind of over it like that, but it's gotta be dead straight. Now, this thing's not spinning at high RPM ever. The most RPM it's gonna see is like when you're, when you're drifting and you're at full lock and you let it return itself and you kind of let the wheel slide through your fingertips. This will be in there and then somewhere in this housing, this will be attached like that. It'll then go over this and then this will go over that and be welded to that, which will conceal this entire thing back inside its respective housing. Okay, so I know I said I was gonna cut it in the bandsaw and get it straight and I was gonna measure it first and all that. I did a couple measurements. But honestly, it's just easier in this scenario if I just cut it and then hold it up and test fit it. The more I talk about it, the more I like the idea of being able to tack weld it up in the car and make sure everything is gonna line up. And that way it's guaranteed. So I'm gonna cut it here. And what that does is gives me a little bit of extra space so that my flange can be trimmed down. Ideally, I'd like to see it about like that going into the new motor. Now, I don't know if that's enough room to fit, but I'm gonna cut here on the outside first and test fit. And then we'll, we'll trim it if we need to. But before we cut it, I'm gonna measure from here to here and here to here just so I can see it. But don't worry because when I put it in the car, that'll be my fixture and that's how I'll make sure it's gonna line up. Right now, from the edge of that flange to this side is exactly 12 inches. And on this side, it is 12 and three quarter. You grab a Sharpie and write that down and then we'll cut it. Hey. A slip fit before, so they actually slide this over it and then they crush it. But this is all steel, so we can be able to, we can weld to that. But we do want to get this plastic collar out too because it's not going to do us any good. It's going to burn up as soon as it gets hot. Now we can see what diameter this is. And it looks like it's the ID of the other piece that was crushed. This is just me getting lucky. So what I'm going to try to do is put a flathead in here. Maybe I'll have to heat it, raise up these edges, get this inner inner piece, it looks like I can hit it out maybe from this side, get it out and then I'll slide this one in and it'd be great if I can just weld it from the other side. It is exactly the same OD it looks like. Slightly smaller maybe, but I'm gonna try that. So I got it cut and I got it knocked out. What I did, I couldn't, I didn't stop to film it, but I'll just explain it real quick, is this piece goes in here and it was like kind of stopped inside. So I may actually put that back in, um, but I'm gonna leave it out for now because we're gonna weld, it's gonna get hot and this is just plastic. Then these two pieces were sitting inside here like that and one on the top and this is the top, this is the part I cut off, right? So this was on here and this was slid in like that. This piece was just like wedged inside there. So what I did, instead of uh, cutting this more, I just tapped it through with the hammer to the other side. Now the other end of it was this piece here and this was the one that slid over like that because there were two of these, right? To get this off, instead of trying to sit here, I was trying to pry it, it wasn't working so I just cut each one out 
and they're just these little tiny pieces like this and they were just sitting inside there. So I just cut those out and the thing just slid right off. So we don't need that anymore, we're not gonna use it. And I was a little bit wrong about the diameter, but it's close. Ideally the best way to do it would be to have this opened up by a muffler shop, just to whatever this ID is. Make the OD of this pipe, the ID of this pipe with a little bit of room, a couple thousands for tolerance. That way it slides in and out. This is perfect for right now because what I'm gonna do is bolt this to the power steering motor with the three bolts that I have, and I can slide it in and out. So it can be maxed out all the way down there, or it can come out this way, and then this will go on the other side. And I'll see what my overall dimensions are, but as long as I'm within the 12 inches and 12.75, Five, from here to here and here to here, I can move this inward or outward to fit the motor. I just gotta make sure this is dead on and the measurements at the end, and then of course, I'll put it in the car like I said, and it'll be welded inside there. I'm gonna grab the motor, I'm gonna bolt this flange up to it and slide it in here, and then we're gonna go put it in the car and see if we're even in the ballpark where we need to be. If we're not, we know we got the space, we can cut this down. And also, one thing I didn't mention before is, worst case scenario, we can cut this off and move up. I mean, we need to add this brace back or do something maybe to make sure the strength is there, but all we've gotta make sure we can do is get to this joint because we've got everything else we need. We've got the OEM wheel, None of this will change. As long as we use this and this and none of this changes, we don't have to worry about plastic panels not fitting or anything moving. As long as we can get from here to there and fit the motor in between, we're chilling. So I had it in the car and I wasn't able to show you guys the way it fit up. It's just too heavy to hold this and hold the camera and on the tripod you can't see anything. But it doesn't matter, I'll, I'll weld it up and I'll put it back in and I'll explain everything that I talked about. It was wrong when I said I could cut this down to any length. I did have to cut it, I was hitting some switches and some relays, but when I cut it I lost the spring purchase for the auto return on the tilt wheel. I might, you know, cut them off, re-weld them somewhere and then just get shorter springs. If uh, my buddy doesn't care, I might not put them back on, but I kind of like being able to keep that functionality. Right now, it'll still tail, it just doesn't spring back into its highest position. We'll screw with that in a little bit, but for now, we need to make sure the internal shaft is gonna work. We know that once this is the right diameter, we can weld this and it'll fit and it'll clear. The motor has to be down here, but that's okay. With a lower panel in, you can't see it, which means you're not gonna kick it. You do need to check with clutch pedal throw and make sure it's not gonna be annoying for your foot to come back, but I'll get it tacked up first and then we'll We'll test that. So right now, this shaft, I've already cut it down some because when I cut this down, it was able to slide all the way in and it was actually maxing out. So this is the piece that goes into there and where this little uh, like half moon relief is, is where the bolt goes through. I'm gonna cut this. I can cut it pretty much anywhere now, but I mean, it can't be super long. It's obviously gotta be shorter than this overall distance. So I'm probably gonna cut it about right here. I'm gonna put it in the bandsaw so it's a nice straight cut. And then if I need to trim it, I will. But what I wanna do is I wanna cut this and then my adapter piece I showed you before that slides over the splines, that's what we're gonna weld to. Because this has this taper, which is kinda nice, I'll cut this as well. This will go over the other side. So basically it'll be like this. When it's coming towards itself, it'll be like this, right? This side is the piece that goes in here, and this side slides over the spline count. And what I like to do is I drill them out and plug weld them as well as weld them all the way around. We can weld that and then we just gotta work from this side downward to the steering rack. Now it's cut and I've got this little nub which is threaded in. You always, whenever you do anything like this, you wanna make sure that everything is tight and in its position that it's gonna be uh, when it's finally installed because if I had this loose or I had end play in here, it might just make me off a little bit but it could be enough to throw off everything else that I'm doing. I've got this sleeve and this sleeve slides over the splines like I showed you before. What I'm gonna do is slide it over this and weld it to this. And I'm gonna weld it super hot. I'm gonna bevel this side first and then I'm gonna actually drill holes and plug weld it probably at least twice, maybe four times around. Uh, like every, you know, three o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock and 12 o'clock. Uh, but the reason I'm doing this as opposed to just welding this to the spline shaft is that way it's removable and it's easier to service. So if this motor ever fails, you can unbolt this flange and slide the motor out rather than like have to unbolt this and then slide it out all as one assembly. The spline will just come right off. And this is how it's set up from GM, so I don't have any, any worries or issues with it being safe enough. The only thing that's imperative here is that this is welded very hot, very well, good solid penetration. We don't want that failing because you die, you just die. And you know, we don't want to die. Well, I may not slide this to let it bottom out against this flange, then it makes it harder to install. Maybe I'll leave like an eighth inch gap here or a little bit more because I got to have room for my weld bead too. So actually, yeah, definitely more than an eighth inch. But we've got all this surface area we can weld to, so we're, we're sitting pretty good. Once I get that done, I'll flap this, this as straight as possible. I'll prep it to be welded. I'll put it back in the car. I'll position this rotation-wise, put a couple tacks on it. Then I'll check the lower panel fitment. I'll show you guys that. 
I'll double check my AC vent fitment and make sure that I can still get that vent in there. It was a little tight before, but it did fit. And then we can do a final weld around it and then we can work from this way out to the rack and get the whole assembly finished up. I'm gonna go ahead and prep this first. I'm just gonna eyeball the flatness of it. You can tell it's cut pretty jagged right now. I'm just gonna clean this edge up and then I'm gonna prep this all the way around so that it can be uh, MIG welded. And then we'll put it in the car and double check fitment. So I got it mostly flat. It's a little bit out of wax still, but it's pretty good and it's nice and prepped. I'll wipe it down with some acetone. We'll tack weld it and then we'll weld the shaft. To weld the inner shaft, you want to prep it really well. So I got all my uh, like finish off here, like this coating, whatever it was from the factory, that's all gone. And then I put a nice uh, like 45 degree bevel on the end of it. I just did it with an angle grinder. I didn't use a belt sander. It's not that consistent or as consistent as it would be. But for what I'm doing, it's fine. Here's the other pieces of the part that goes into the steering uh, wheel section. And I, I beveled this before I knew how I was going to weld it because I thought it might end up being like a butt weld. And that way you get better penetration down inside the joint. But for this case, it's just going to slide inside like this. And then I'm going to weld it. So I'm going to go right to about there. And that way I don't have a weld kind of like uh, moving on, like bleeding over into the splines. Now these splines don't matter in this scenario because these are the ones that align it. Then the bolt goes through. But the splines on this side, on the bevels or the chamfered side here, are going to go into the receiving side of the steering wheel portion of this column. We don't want to damage these. If these get like marred up at all or any sort of imperfections, it's really hard to slide the splines in. That's the there's a reason they have so many splines and it's so it fits nice and tight. You got to be very careful not to scratch this, drop a tool on it. Anything like that will have you sitting there trying to file it back down just to get it to fit in there right. Okay, so now I'm doing the plug weld. So it cooled down a little bit and I'm taking an all tool, which is like a round punch, basically a center punch. And I'm gonna punch this, I already did the other side, I'm gonna punch it right here. And then I'm going to open the hole up. I'm gonna start off small with a bit like this and I'll open it up a bit with this before I go to my, my biggest bit. I'm going to drill the hole until I get into the smaller piece after I go through this outer layer. And then the outside hole is the only thing I'm gonna open up. That way I can allow the weld, I can aim it down in there and allow the weld to flow around and it'll just look like a plug on the outside and then I'll grind it smooth. Just an extra level of precaution just to weld it a little bit more. I'm using a, uh, a bandsaw as a vice. I told you guys I didn't have a lot of money. It's true. Just one good hit because it could move after you do it. Now I got a nice little punch to start my hole. Switch to the smallest bit. This bit's cheap, I don't really care if I wear it out. So now I got this thing opened up, it's probably a little hot. I'm gonna grab it with some pliers, take it over and weld those plugs shut. And when you do it, you wanna aim the torch down inside there at the center of it so you don't weld the outside first. Cause if I do, I'm really just plugging the hole and I'm not gonna get any sort of penetration into this piece on the inside. I wanna try to run Maybe a little slower wire speed, sit on there, get it hot, and then I'll back out and move around and it'll actually plug it and you, you could grind it and never even know it was welded. I just showed you that the plug welds and I drilled them out and now I can't weld them because I conveniently am out of welding wire. I'm just moving forward a little bit. I need to go get this thing expanded anyway. So I just slid this in, max it out, it's bottomed out against the internal piece that I still got that stops about right here. It's gonna be about like that in reference to this being flat here and this being flat. This is almost dead on, but you can see it's got some wiggle space. So I'm gonna take this little piece to a muffler shop and have him open it. This flange portion here is gonna be the outer dimension is gonna be the same size as the ID of this piece here so that they, it's a slip fit connection and it's just gonna be self-centering. It'll hold everything straight. And then on the other side, once we get that done, we're ready to move forward. I'll get some more welding wire. We'll weld those plugs, get this opened up. We'll weld this, set it in the car, check it, we'll tack it, check it, fully weld it, and then we can move on to the other side. Now, I already know that we're, we're good. Like, I know it's gonna work, but this is gonna have to be cut down. This is our lower flange piece, and remember, we've got a bearing inside here that the shaft, this shaft, that side is go goes in to the steering rack, and then this side goes into this housing here. That's gonna get cut down and welded, and it's gonna get welded to the piece that goes on right here. Basically, this is the right spline count for this. Assume the bolt's not in there. This goes here, and then this piece will be welded to it. 
somewhere in there. So we'll be able to put this side in the engine bay and then we'll see where this comes out and we'll cut it, grind it, test it until it's perfect because we don't want to go too far and not be able to reach. That's the internal portion of that. The outside is going to be this flange here like we talked about before. Right now it's, it's way too long. So I got to figure out where we're going to cut it down here. And this is steel and this is aluminum so I don't know exactly how we're going to attach that yet but it needs to be attached because it needs to hold everything dead straight. What I might try to come up with is this steel insert here could be welded to. Maybe I'll build some sort of bracket that comes off and holds this and it's welded to here. We will get this expanded and get the top section done and then we'll revisit it once we can put it in the car and see where we are. All right guys, that's gonna do it for part two of the S13 EPS install. Please check back in a couple days where I should have part three all done and we can finally wrap this up. Thanks for watching, peace out.